You're listening to the Mindful Mama podcast, episode 175. Today is a solo episode on how to be present. Welcome to the Mindful Mama podcast. Here it's about becoming a less irritable, more joyful parent. At Mindful Mama, we know that you cannot give what you do not have. And when you have calm and peace within, then you can give it to your children. I'm your host, Hunter Clark Fields, Mindful Mama Mentor. I help smart, thoughtful parents stay calm so they can have strong, connected relationships with their children. I've been practicing mindfulness for over 20 years. I'm the creator of the Mindful Parenting Course, and I'm the author of the upcoming new book, Raising Good Humans. I am so glad you are here today. Welcome back to the podcast. If you are a long time listener or sometimes listener and I'm welcome if you are new. I am so glad you're here. This is going to be a very actionable episode that you can take away tips and tools that you can use right away. And we're going to be talking about how to be present because on this podcast, Dr. Dan Siegel, among other people, but Dr. Dan Siegel, who's done a lot, tons of research, hugely respected in this field, said that the number one best thing that a parent can do for their child is to be present. So what does exactly does that mean? And how do we do that? So in this episode, I'm going to share with you four simple steps to practice being present with your child. And I want you to listen for a few things here. So you're going to listen for those four steps, of course. I want you to really practice them, bring them into your life, you know, as best you can. Um, But I want you to listen for that far more than toys or lessons. Your child really needs you, you with less tension and more ease. And that our, your presence, like being really fully present, soothes your child. It helps your child feel seen and heard and accepted. And that these practices, these mindfulness practices can be practiced really in everyday life. You don't have to have a practice on the cushion to do these four simple steps that I am going to share with you. And before we dive in, I just want to make a quick ask of you. If you like the podcast, if you get something out of the podcast, please do subscribe please do leave a rating or review wherever you listen to the podcast because that makes a huge difference in the iTunes. You know, the Apple podcast algorithm, helping other people find the podcast because it's kind of can be hard to find things that you're looking for. So, so leaving a rating and a review is a huge, huge help for the podcast, helps grow this, you know, the audience that will start to change the generational patterns. So please, please do that. And, and you know, it's incredible to do if you you enjoy this episode or any of the episodes, take a screenshot of it, share it on Instagram to tell me on Instagram that you're listening. I'll say hi. And, and also, you know, send it to your friends, send a text message to that group of moms you may talk to, or, whoever, share it on Facebook and and let people know because, you know, we need to spread the word about content that, you know, and and media that's going to support us and help us in this incredibly distracted world. So that is my, my quick ask for you. Please help support the podcast. And now on to this episode as we talk about how to be present. When my daughters were a lot littler, we were at the playground one day, one day near the library, and I watched them doing the monkey bars, you know, while I chilled on the bench with my library books and the water bottles. And nearby, there was a little boy about three years old. Another child had stopped him from playing with his truck at the bottom of the slide, and he was upset. And he went to talk to his parent, who was on the bench, on a bench near mine, on her phone. And he grabbed at her and told her what happened, and she kind of hmmed at him and continued to look at the phone. And the boy was like clearly put out, and he started yelling and whining loudly, pulling on her. And so then she became upset and started yelling at him, threatening to leave the playground. And he started crying, and they left. Now, you know, it might have been like a message from her dying mother or something equally as important, right? But Chances are that she also might have been, like I have been many times, 
just sucked into an email, a text, or a video. And the point in telling this story is not to judge, but to notice, right? Like, what would that situation have been like if, instead of lost in another world online, that parent had been able to see her upset son, listen to his complaint, and offer some empathy, right? How would that little boy have responded had he felt and been really seen and heard? You know, chances are it would have been a lot happier end result for both of them, right? So on this podcast, Dr. Dan Siegel, you know, the author of you know many New York Times bestsellers such as The Whole Brain Child and Parenting from the Inside Out, clinical professor of psychiatry at UCLA School of Medicine, executive director of the Mindsight Institute, right? Dan Siegel. He said on this podcast that the number one best thing a parent can do for their child is to be present. So what does that mean and how do we become present, right? We hear that all the time, like we should, we should live, in, live in the moment, be present, and, and this is how to be happy, right? You know, thank you so much for sharing Yoda, but we get it. But how? How do we actually do that if we are not monks living in an ashram? Like, how do we do that in our regular everyday lives? So, you know, we all, that's what this episode is all about. We're going to talk about how to be present, how to be present with your child, right? Because this is what they crave and they need is our attention how do we how do we do that how do we be present so you know we all know instinctively when someone is fully present for us and how it can be really palpable but it's important to define first what we mean by being present so being present means having your focus your attention your thoughts and feelings all fixed on what is happening in the moment right now if you are speaking to somebody, then your attention and energy is focused on them and what they are saying. If you're doing a task, then your entire being is focused on the task. You're not lost in thoughts of the past or future. You're not planning dinner. You're not on your phone. You're not ruminating over some unskillful action. You're, you're there in the present. So being present means that your mind is in the now and now is where your body is now. And practicing to be fully present gives rise to mindfulness and what is mindfulness so my favorite definition comes from john kabat-zinn scientist author and meditation teacher who has been hugely influential in bringing mindfulness into the mainstream of medicine and society he says that mindfulness is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally So paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So meditation then is a way to practice mindfulness. It's perhaps the gold standard for practicing mindfulness so that it's easier to be fully present in all of our lives. Um, So, you know, this might be now, now you're like, wait a second, Hunter, meditation, you know, this might be sounding like a lot of work to you right now. So let me just remind you here about why it's so important to practice being present. I mean, we may want to, you know, put our cell phone down when we're talking to our children, but more than that, you know, it's the number one best thing we really can do for our children. We're demonstrating to them that we really see them and accept them for exactly who they are in this moment. We're here with them, not lost in thought. It's how we show love with our attention, you know, and also like becoming, it's it's incredible thing to do for our kids is to just give them our attention. They crave it so much, but also becoming more and more present will make you happier too. So there was this Harvard researcher, Matt Killingsworth, and he created an app in an attempt to answer the question, what makes us happy once and for all? And the results have been an eye-opener. According to Mr. Killingsworth's data, we're happiest when we are mindful of the moment and we're least happy when our mind is wandering. 
So this this study took a really big sampling of 15,000 people, and it was really diverse. It included people across the socioeconomic stratosphere of varying levels of education, age, occupation, incomes, marital status, and across 80 countries. So really, really diverse. The present premise, right, was very simple. Throughout the day, at random times, participants were contacted through their phones and asked to rate their current happiness level, what activity they were involved in when the call came, and whether or not their mind was wandering from the activity. So as it turned out, what made people happy had far less to do with what they were doing and significantly more to do with whether their attention was in fully present in the moment. That was what made us happier. So not only will practicing to be fully present be an amazing gift to your child, um, but it will also make you happier too. Pretty cool, right? So how do we do it? How do we become more present with our kids? Okay, I have a simple four-step process for you, dear listener. All right, step one. Got your pen and paper ready? <laughs> step one, set your intention to be present. Very simple. So remember that mindfulness is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So our first step then is to choose to practice being present. Really simple. You know, if you're home with your child, decide to intentionally practice presence. Put the phone on silent, set aside your to-do list, give yourself over to nothing else to do except practicing being present. And I think it's really helpful to set a timer Give yourself like 10 minutes and decide that for these 10 minutes, you will practice to give your full attention to what is happening in this moment with your child and yourself. So that first step, step one, is to simply decide. Set your intention to be present. Sounds pretty simple, right? All right, now we get to step two, which is focus your attention. So if you are deciding to be present with your child, then you're essentially doing a paying attention to my child meditation. That's so cool, right? I love that. So your child is the anchor for your attention. And you remember an anchor is like you drop it down from a boat and that ain't when as the boat, it keeps the boat from sort of wandering off into the ocean, right? So your child is the anchor for your attention. So essentially, you'll attempt to place your attention on your child with an attitude of kindness and curiosity. And this curiosity and kindness piece is really important. Allow yourself to see your child as if you're an alien beamed down into this space, seeing them for the first time ever. Be curious about their body, their learning, their actions. Wonder at what needs are driving their choices. Notice the fuzz on her earlobe. Notice the shape of his hands. Be curious about what your child is curious about. So really take this time to see them as a beginner. Notice them as if you're seeing them for the first time ever, because the truth is you have never seen your child in this moment before ever. There has never been this moment has never existed ever, ever before. And we are like a river that you can't step into the same river twice, right? Because we're constantly changing and learning and growing. All our cells, you know, change over in our bodies every seven years. So be curious about who your child is in this moment. Really you know, imagine you're that alien. Wonder what is going on. Refocus your attention. This is step two. All right, so then comes step three. Notice your distraction. <laughs> so as soon as you attempt to place your attention 100% fully on this single anchor, hear your child, 
you'll find out that you will fail. Your mind will wander into thoughts of the future. I hope he doesn't always whine. Thoughts of the past. When I was little, I never smashed things like that. Critical thoughts. Look, she's messed. She's dragged that chair into the mud when I told her not to. Messing things up. Judgments and a lot more. <laughs> so it's okay. This is normal. You are not attempting to, quote, clear your mind of thoughts. That would be about as frustrating as st trying to stop your ears from hearing. This is what minds do. They think that's okay. The thoughts are not a problem. Let me repeat. The thoughts are not a problem. <laughs> they are, in fact, an opportunity. They're an opportunity to notice that you are distracted and with kindness and without judging, return your intention to the anchor in the present moment. So if you were a weightlifter, this would be when you pull that barbell back up again, when you've been come, become distracted. And just like weightlifting, it is not a one and done thing. That's why we call it practice. And in fact, it is a, so much like weightlifting because you are building a muscle. You're building the muscle of your attention. And so the thoughts are not a problem. They're an opportunity to bring your attention back with kindness and curiosity. So your practice is to just notice with kindness and curiosity, bring your attention back to the present moment. There's no need for self-judgment or recrimination. We all fail at 100% full concentration. That's okay. Part of the practice is to notice this and practice self-kindness. We all fail. But we all have the, ca the capacity to strengthen our ability to be present. That's why we repeat step two, focusing our attention. You continue on until your timer goes off. So you continue focusing your attention, being curious, staying present, notice what's noticing what's happening with your child, noticing what's happening with you and your attention, and then bringing your attention back. And you repeat and repeat and repeat. And you continue until your timer goes off and you just, you know, be diligent and be compassionate with yourself. It's not easy. And if you haven't had practice with this before, it's going to be hard. If you have had practice with this before, it may still be really hard. So be diligent and be compassionate with yourself. You're building a new muscle. And just like if you go to body pump for the first time, you're going to be sore the next couple days. It might be challenging, okay? All right. So step three is notice your distraction and you return to step two and keep coming back. Focusing, we focus. We notice our distraction, we focus, we notice, we come back. So we could end there, but I want to add a final step. Step four, honor yourself for practicing. So when your timer goes off and you have practiced being present for those 10 minutes, you will have noticed probably now that it's hard to be fully present. You probably notice that your mind and your attention are actually not fully under your control. That's great. That's a wonderful realization, which can give you lots of compassion for how others struggle too. It can lessen your tendency to judge, which is wonderful. Increase your compassion, lessen your tendency to judge. So honor yourself for practicing. Honor yourself for choosing to practice presence instead of distraction. Know that what you practice grows stronger, you're building muscle. So this session has already strengthened your ability to be present in every area of your life. Those steps again are in four easy steps. Step one, set your intention to be present. Decide, I recommend setting a timer, really helps set that intention. 
Step two is to focus your attention. Choose your anchor. It can be your uh, paying attention to my child meditation, right? And be curious. Imagine you're an alien. Zoom down, beam down into this space and focus your attention on what you see in the present moment, what you feel. Step three, notice your distraction. You know, notice that your mind wanders. And then just pull that barbell back up again and bring your attention back again to the present moment. Step four, honor yourself for practicing. So you can make these 10 minutes a daily practice and it will strengthen your relationship with your child. You could also do this with other tasks like mindfulness of washing the dishes, for example, or taking a mindful walk. They all essentially follow the same steps to in set an intention that I will be practicing to be present for this amount of time, focusing your attention, noticing your distraction, and then honoring yourself for practicing. So it can be a great way to practice mindfulness in daily life. But I recommend that you, you know, say you're going to practice this. Give yourself a few weeks to take a mindful walk every day or practice your 10 minutes of mindfully paying attention to your child every day at the same time so that you can create something of a habit and see how that affects your life. The thing is, I all those benefits, right, like the studies and the benefits of mindfulness, like greater clarity of mind, reduced reactivity, better sleep, all of those things, they're not things that I want you to take my word on. I want you to practice them for yourself and find out, be like a scientist, test it out. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> so the thing is, you know, why we're going to practice this, you know, our well-being, our happiness, these are some of them, this is incredibly important. But our relationship with our kids is also incredibly important. I know it's incredibly important to me and I know it's incredibly important to you. And so far more than toys or lessons or, you know, the untimeness or getting all the to-do things done, your child really needs you, the authentic you beneath all the stress and reactivity. Your child needs you with less tension and more presence and ease. That gift you could give that, if you could give that to your child, would be worth a thousand trips to the water park <laughs> more than a thousand trips to the water park it would be worth a lifetime right that's how we show our love so your ability to be fully present will naturally actually start to soothe your child helping your child feel seen heard and accepted right and that is powerful medicine powerful medicine and my teacher Thich Nhat Han, the zen buddhist monk sums this up wisely when you love someone, the best thing you can offer is your presence. How can you love if you are not there? Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you can start bringing these four steps into your life right away. And I know you can. You can do it. You can do it, my friend. So if you enjoyed the podcast, please make sure you're subscribed and you have left a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. Please share it with your friends. Take a screenshot. Say hi to me on Instagram. Let me know you're listening or share, share that screenshot with your friends via text or Facebook or whatever. It makes a big difference. Word of mouth is like the best way to share. So if you could do that this week. That would be amazing, my friend. I would really appreciate it. And so will the future people who want to have support, right? In a crazy, distracted world to be more present, help us develop and cultivate some more calm and, and peace in our lives. Gosh, we need it, you know, so much. So please, please do support the podcast by Leaving, leaving a rating, leaving a review, sharing it with friends. It makes, makes a huge difference. And I'm so grateful. Finally, I just want to let you know that. This, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful to 
be connecting with you. I'm so grateful. Um, this is such a supportive tribe. It makes me feel amazing to do this work. You know, there's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes who are involved in this podcast. Not only do I record it and we find the guests, I have a whole team of assistants who helps to put this together for you every week. So we love doing this and I hope that it, it makes a difference for you. I hope that this helps you this week become a little more present and with, with your child and make those strong, loving connections and be a little more present with yourself. So wishing you a great week. Talk to you again next week. Namaste. Are you a mom who wants to feel less stressed and enjoy motherhood more? Do you want to be calmer with your kids and be more present for all of your life? I'm a mom who has gone from really being stressed and yelling when my kids were young to be having a more grounded, more at ease relationship with life and having more enjoyable, cooperative relationships with my kids. And I've shown hundreds and thousands of women around the world how to do this. And I want to show you how to do it too. So if you are currently feeling stuck or stagnant, this is definitely for you. I've created a free downloadable audible training, Mindfulness for Moms, the superpower you need. And it will show you how to respond rather than react, how to let go of stress and feel more grounded in seconds, how to have a smoother day today and become more present for your kids for a lifetime. To get on on this audio training absolutely free, simply visit the website www.mindfulmomguide.com.